Good morning. Give a few minutes for people to log in to Facebook. I know I'm running a few minutes late. And to see what God is doing. We have so much to be thankful for this morning. The sun is out at least today. According to southeastern Louisiana, we may not have no sun out for the weekend. So, how are y'all doing this morning? I'm doing inviting people on Facebook to get an audience start going. We're going to be talking about trials today. And we're going to And get uh, and get some understanding about the trials, and get and understand what's happening and and so forth. So, let's get let's get into the let's get into some of the announcements that I need to make, and we will go from there. We have our uh, Wednesday night. We are going to be starting a class on Wednesday night, and it is. Uh, going to be our foundation class. Let me pull up some of the events. We have the event of our foundation class. Can you see it right there? Is it? Oh, no. It's too bright. Can't see it. But we have the foundation class that's going to begin September 20th at 7 o'clock. It's going to go for 10 weeks. We have the class schedule posted. So if you never had a good foundation in the Word, and if you never had anybody um, teach you foundation, or understand what it means, how what happened when you got saved, what is the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How does the Holy Spirit work in your life? What is restitution? What is the establishment of your family? What is the... Um, uh, priorities that you need to make between your job and church what is spiritual warfare what is the um, uh, praise and worship what is this because some of this can be very new or you could be in church and you wonder why do we lift our hands why do we do certain things well this class is for you and so my husband and I both will be teaching the class different um, lessons and so we invite you to come out invite your friends it's going to be in Mandeville and so uh, the address and everything is on the uh, on our Facebook page and our website page our website page is upcoming cla um, upcoming classes and so you can click on that and get the full schedule and excuse me get the address or you can go to Facebook go to our events and you will see that then the second thing I want to um, announce is that we are having the glory fire conference the glory fire conference is going to be September 29th 30th and October 1st you do not want to miss this event the last time we had this event was in Baton Rouge we called it the Wells of Glory conference it had um, we did we did what the uh, classes on how to blow the shofar and so forth this time we've changed the format up a little bit but we're going to have prophetess and revivalist Andy McDougall will be with us for two services and then you will have myself and my daughter Catherine Mitchell and my husband who will um, be in the other services along with our praise and worship 
uh, team. You don't want to miss it. The last time people were saying they could feel the glory of God out in the parking lot of the Hyatt Place in Baton Rouge. And so we are praying and, and, um, and fasting for this event for God to move mightily because we want his people set free. We want them healed and we want them delivered. The next thing I want to announce is that we are going to have a, we are asking for 1,000 partners to pray with us, to stand with us for this event, for other events. And we are believing that God is going to accelerate our ministry and push us where it needs to be. And so if you're one of those partners, if you will go to our website and it says, uh, become a prayer partner, press prayer partner and say, yes, I'm going to stand with you and um, fill out the form so we have your information so that we can pray for you. And when we need to go in and, and send out a prayer request, you will be on that group. Uh, if you become a partner with us this month, we are going to be sending out our partner um, packages. We have um, CD of prosperity scriptures and a sample of the anointing oil that God has given me. So if you will send in and become a partner and any gift, any gift we appreciate. And so we ask that you do that as well. Press become a partner, fill out the form and we will get you the um, package. So let's get into what the word of God is saying. Good morning, James and Rhonda. So let's get into what the Word of God is saying today. And I'm, I'm picking up um, from casting all your cares upon him that we have, uh, we were talking about last week, uh, last week when we came together. And so in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, is where we're coming from, and we're going to concentrate on verse 10 and come in with other um, verses out there. But here we have, it says in verse 7, it says, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That word anxiety, as I brought out, means cares, worries, fears, things that is... Um, bogging you down that you think you have the answer or you just take away from God and say I, I can handle this and really you can't handle it because you're trying to figure out how to handle it and he says uh, be sober in spirit be alert your adversary the devil prowls around looking and roaring lion seeking someone to devour so he's waiting for you to come along and say um i i'm so worried i'm so stressed about the situation i'm so concerned about this situation that i cannot um i don't know what to do and the bible says you know cast all your cares it, it's it, it's 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 perfect for what he's saying, cast all your cares first because your enemy looks for a foothold or something that he can go into and add injury to, um, add insult to injury into your wound that you have, into your worry that you have. Well, you know, you believed God for this, but um, it didn't happen when you thought it was going to happen. And the key is when you thought it was going to happen, not when God decided that it was going to happen. So God is on his Kairos time, not on our Kairos time. See, our timing and God's timing is totally different. But we always know that he's always on time and he always takes care of what he's supposed to take care of. Just as the uh, Israelites was at the Red Sea, he, Pharaoh was coming up the hills, coming in the, uh, the back way, and they had the Red Sea look like nothing was going to escape. And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The next thing he says is, what do I do? And, and, and God literally says, use what's in your hand. Use what's in your hand. Your faith and the hope of you, of what God has designed you, and the trial that he has ordained to show you different flaws in your character so that he can put in his fruit, his character in you so that you can overcome this situation. 
So it says in verse 9, but resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences and suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. So we know that other people go through similar trials, similar things and events. Now we know that each person is unique, but there's certain characteristics of of different character flaws in each of us that at, at some time that God can and will pinpoint in each of us and each of us may go through a trial totally different but it still has some um, nuggets in that trial that you can share with other people and so just because you're going through this doesn't mean that nobody else is going through it it means that somebody may have already went through it or they're going through it or they will go through it and so God's given you nuggets to help them along the way so as you're learning and refining your character to God's character See, when it says that his ways is higher than our ways, in other words, his thinking is above what our earthly mind can process. So when we take and we put this mind in that which is in Christ Jesus in our mind, putting on the helmet of salvation, then we begin to think the higher thoughts of God and God begins to to show us his ways and we take on his character we take on his ways of doing things and so when we think we don't think like the earthly man that we used to we don't think in fear and doubt and unbelief and we don't think of that oh I'm not going to make it I can't do this we begin to answer that with I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can overcome this because he's already overcome the world I have peace not as the world has it. I have peace that passes all understanding because I'm not moved because my God's already fought this battle, already won, and I can overcome it because of what he's done in, in and for me at the cross. So when he gets down to after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who called you to eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, establish you. So I want to focus in on that particular verse. So after you've suffered a while, after you have after you have call after you have had this trial and this trial makes you pressed. If you turn to um second uh, Corinthians chapter 2 Verse 4. And we want to look at verse 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of power will be of God and not of ourselves. Now, look at the treasure that's in you. The treasure in you is the hope of glory, is Christ. He's living and dwelling in your heart, in your spirit. And as he's living and dwelling, it is a treasure. You don't exactly know what all this treasure involves. It's like going after a, um, a ship that has been wrecked and laying on the bottom of the ocean for centuries. And as they go in and they begin to dig it up, they begin to dig up treasures. And they don't know how much treasure is going to unfold from this shipwreck. And so you were a shipwreck in life. The enemy had came and shipwrecked you in different areas. And so God's telling you, I've put my spirit in you. And because of that, I'm going to take and I'm going to cause pressure. Because see, when they would go underwater and they would get the treasure, it is a pressure of the water weight that goes down on them. And they are pressured and they have to get back up to the surface at a certain specific time. See, timing is very, very important because see, the weight that God puts on us to push his treasure, him out of you, for you to become more like him and for you to become 
who he is. It says that we're to be imitators of Christ. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask anything. In order to be a, in order to ask anything, you have to know what's going on in the heavens because you don't want to ask amiss. And the and how you don't how you know you don't ask amiss, you put the word in your heart and it becomes such a part of you that you become a walking son of God or daughter walking upon the earth and you are manifesting. See, that's what happened with Enoch. Enoch was not because he, God took him. He had such a relationship with God, the father, that God says, I got to take you out of here. The earth cannot handle you anymore. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be so full of him and knowing him that his treasure of who he is just literally burst out from us and that people are drawn to the spirit of God within us and know us. But this is how it happens. In verse 8 it says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So what does that mean, the dying? In other words, that means that we are decreasing and allowing Christ to increase. And so each pressure, each affliction, each thing that you go through, it is to show you, number one, that God is who God said he is, that his word is not going to fail or become void. God is who God is. You have to decide that. And sometimes the only way that we can understand who God is in our life is to actually go through a trial and God show up mightily. See, the Israelites had no, no, they should have had no doubt that God was going to show up for them because he was with them with the 10 plagues of Egypt. He led them out of Egypt made them have ransom with Egypt. They went out, none was sick, none was poor, none was lame. They all had shoes. Their shoes lasted for 40 years in the wilderness. There was no reason that they should have doubted God to go take the giants in the land of um, promise, but because of their void of understanding and thinking and not being able to renew their mind of who God was caused them to miss their promised land and die in the wilderness. Don't be like the children of Israel and because of your worry, fear and doubt and unbelief, die in the wilderness where God is trying to bring out of you the character flaws of this world and show you who he is. And it says that, that, that they were afflicted. What affliction, affliction is just being pressed. It's like that. Remember when I, when I, when I gave that, um, lesson on the uh, crushing of the olives, there was a, a, a Gethsemane, which means a pressing roll that pressed out oil. That's what it is. It's a pressing, a hard press, a straightening. It is something that, that presses you to bring out that anointing oil that just literally comes and permeates you, that makes you smell like the fragrance of God, that lets you know that you have fresh oil every morning. But it's suppressing. It's to cause you to change your ways. It's to cause you to change your action or course. It is a pressing of who you are character. See, people wouldn't have liked me back 30 years ago, 35 years ago. You know, I, I, I curse like a sailor. I would literally tell you off. I didn't, if you looked at me wrong, I would ask you what your problem was. And see, so now God has got a hold of me where I don't, I don't, I don't do stuff like that. I don't come at you and, and say what you're looking at and, and curse you out. I, 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 I have honey on my lips and it persuades, my speech persuades people. And so here you are, you, 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 you you're pressed and you're, you're pressed on every side, but you're not going to be crushed. See, it says, it says afflicted 
in every way, but not crushed. In other words, you can have the oil. You can have that stone of Gethsemane run over you and produce what God wants to produce in your life and not be crushed. You don't have to have a wounded spirit. A wounded spirit is something that comes and it's a broken heart that God has to come and mend and he has to set you free. A wounded spirit is something that's happened that causes you to have to doubt what people are, motives are about you. It is to cause um, emotional pain. It's to cause depression. It says, who, who, who can contain a wounded spirit? That's why God says that he's came to heal the brokenhearted and he's came to set you free. And so even though you are crushed, doesn't mean he's going to break you. Doesn't mean that you're going, you're not going to be crushed. You're going to be pressed so that you can come out with his greatness. See, Jesus died. Jesus was man and he was God all in one. And it's the same with us. We are man with the spirit of God in us that compels us to be like Jesus. In fact, it says that we are sons of the living God. We're joint heirs with Christ. So we have a struggle and we have that struggle to take down that part of that old man and not have it. And sometimes that's a daily, daily, daily um, uh, thing that we have to do. That we have to die to ourselves, die to our wants, die to our, our, our needs, die to who we are and watch what God would do. So it says that we are perplexed. We are um, to be without a resource or a straight or to be left wanting or embarrassed or to be a, in, uh, in doubt, not knowing, to be led to, to have loss, perplexed, not to know what to do. See, even though we're perplexed, we're not despairing. Why are we not despairing? Because even though it doesn't look like there's a way, doesn't look like God's going to show up, we know that we have the promise that God is going to show up, that it says in Psalms 46, 1, that he is a help in the present and a present time, that he He's always there according to Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, that the Lord is my helper. He's always going to help me. So even though I may be perplexed and don't exactly understand what's going on in this season and God hasn't given me direction, as long as I stay the course, as long as I allow him to do what he needs to do to refine my character, to let the fruit of the spirit come alive in me and his character, then God, then I know that that I won't be in despair, that God is my help and he's going to see me through. And even though I'm persecuted, I'm not forsaken. Even though people talk about me, even though people say vow things and they want to, and they want to decide what I should be and so forth. That's not what God says. God says that I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to allow people to do what they're doing to you. In fact, he gives us instructions in Romans chapter 12. I believe it's verse 28. It says, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who talk about you. Pray for those who misuse you. Pray for them that you're going to heap coals of fire upon their head. In fact, it says in Luke and in, in, in Matthew, it says rejoice when people persecute you, when people talk about you. Rejoice in the Lord. Give God praise because you've been considered one of the ones that God can trust. That no matter what people say about you, that you will overcome what they say and you'll stay the course. Course. Remember, the wise man builds his house upon the rock. The wise man builds his house upon the word of God. And the word of God, who is Jesus, becomes his stability and his factor of being stable. And as he's building his house, even though the winds, even though the winds of doctrine, even though the winds of people talking about you, even though the winds of people slandering your name, if you build your house upon the rock, you will not crush. You will stay the course. You will be faithful because God has put his word in you and his words be coming alive and it's giving you hope that one day this is not going to be see Jesus was persecuted he was talked about he was called a demon he was called Be he was called uh Beelzebub he was called everything but 
in the end, when he triumphed, went down to hell, got the keys to death, grave in the hell, and and uh and the and the hell. He got the keys. He came back up triumphantly. He nailed your sins on a cross, the debt that you could not pay. He came up, he made open show of the enemy. He he totally annihilated them. And that open show that Paul was talking about, it was like what the Hebrew, what the uh, Romans would do when they would bring back casualties of war. They would cause a big parade and they would parade their um, enemy in front of, of the uh the person on the throne, the Caesar or whoever. And so here it is. Jesus comes. He parades the enemy. He parades Satan along the route. And he shows his father how he made an open shame of him, paralyzing him, cutting off all power. He had no more power. That's in Colossians 2, 4, 14 and 15. And so here it is. That's what God has done. He's done that for you. He's done that for me. And he says, even though you're persecuted, don't worry. I've already paid the price. I already know what it's going to take to clear your name and your name will be known. See, there's a lot of people that goes, I don't want to be known. I only want Jesus to see me. Yes, I only want people to see Jesus in me, but they need to see Jesus in me and know who I am. We know who Apostle Paul is because he was known because he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. We know who he is because that's how he perpetuated the gospel for all, for all eternity until Christ comes back. That's how we know who he is. People need to know who you are in Christ and they need to know the report that you bring. Oh, that's Barbara Mitchell. She brings about the power of God to change people's lives. Do you want to be changed? Listen, and God will make God will give her words of wisdom to change your life. I'm not putting me up on a pedestal because I'm not taking the glory. It's God who gives the wisdom and gives the understanding. And he also anoints you to be the person in the earth to bring about his will and do his work. See, there's there's plenty that that's that humble mentality that I always have to be poor. God hasn't called you to be poor. God's called you to be rich in him. He's called you to be a witness in the earth. A witness in the earth is what God has chosen to give you in gifts and talents and the office that he's called you to be. Some of you you're only an administrator in an office. Be the best administrator you can be. But in that process people will Come and know you as a person of integrity, as a person that can lead people, as a person that can operate and be honest. If you're a giver, then give like nobody's business because God's going to give you more and more and more and more. He'll give anybody that gives and take, wants to take on that gift of giving. He will give you supernatural ability to give. If you are called to be a prophet, then be the best prophet that you can. Learn his word. Learn to operate and know how you're seeing things in the spirit and watch what God will do. So we're not forsaken. We may be struck down. We may be seem like everything's going haywire and in our lives, but God says that you will not be destroyed. No matter what the enemy has pushed to you, you will not be destroyed. You know, I remember, and I'm, I'm fixing the end because I can't teach everything that I, I want to get to, but there was a time in, in, in 2007, we lost our house in Texas. We had moved from Louisiana to Texas. I didn't understand Texas law. We got into one of those bad mortgages that was going on at the time. And so two years later, we here we are after Hurricane Katrina, we were losing our house. It was a devastating time. It seemed like it destroyed us. But as I began to pray and I began to prophesy to the situation, I said, Lord, they said that if we, if they buy this house on the court, on the steps of the court, 
court that if it comes within $5,000, they can come at us and we would have to repay that $5,000 and it will be a judgment against us. And I began to pray against that we would have no judgment, that when this house was foreclosed on and it was taken away or whatever God cho chose to do, whatever he chose to do, I, I, whatever, I wanted him to come pay it off. But I said, whatever your will is, because the house was an expensive house and operating. And so I said, whatever your will, I said, but I don't want to be held in any judgment. So when they went to the courthouse and they sold our property, they sold our property from a Freddie Mac to a Fannie Mae loan. They sold it for $5,695 more than what we owed. We only owed 166000 and they paid 172000 in some odd change. See, that's God saying, look, you may, enemy may came at you, may have got you into this bad situation, maybe judgment or whatever. I mean, uh, your judgment was off in this area. But God's saying, I have not destroyed you. I will not cause destruction to come to you. I will come and make a way where there seems to be no way. And so in that, we go on and we learn that as we are dying to ourselves, Christ is becoming more and more and more in you. There are things that I used to do that I don't do anymore because of Christ living in me and becoming alive and increasing in me. And so we have to keep that before our eyes. Now, I want, I'm not going to be able to get to this part of the teaching, and I'll come back later on this uh and teach it on, um, I believe it's Friday that I'm scheduled to teach it, but uh, I may pop on tomorrow. So, but it says in verse, um, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 4, and I want to read this and leave this with you. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also, we have obtained our introduction by faith into grace in which we stand. We exalt in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but also we exalt in tribulation. We rejoice in tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proving character, and proving character, hope. And the hope that does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts and through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Remember your trials, and we'll get into 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 7 the next time. Your trials is to provide God's proving character so that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is who God is, and He is not going to leave you nor forsake you because God is what he says he is. He's the same that he was for Moses. He's the same that he was for Noah. He's the same that he was for David. He's the same that he was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's the same that he was for the 12 apostles. He's the same that he was for all the prophets, Elijah, and so forth. He's the same throughout. He's the same person that worked with Smith Wigglesworth, that worked with Lester Summerall, that worked with Catherine Kuhlman, that works with you, that works with me. He's the same God. He's no respecter of person. They went through trials, had trials and tribulation. They came through. You will go through trials, have trials and tribulation, and you will come through. And each time you come through, you'll come through with a greater amount of glory. That's why it says we go from glory to glory. We go from line to upon line, precept upon precept, as long as we learn what God is trying to say to us, we know that God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. This trial is not in vain. When I go through a trial, the first thing I ask God, what is it that you want me to change about me? And when I do that, God pinpoints and he begins to show me in his word and I get revelation on what I've been going through. 
Now, I want to pray because I know that there is a storm that's forming in the Gulf, and I believe it's directly forming in the Gulf to cause disruption to the New Orleans area and this region. And I believe that it is not from God. I believe that it's a principality that's coming in to destroy this area. And we know that God has given us the authority to take authority over storms and over what's going on. And so right now, I lift up the New Orleans region and I lift up the Gulf Coast region and I command her, I command Tropical Storm Harvey to dissipate now in the name of Jesus. You will literally, God send the, the, um, the, the low that it begins to shear off all the all the rain clouds coming together and that it will not affect this region now in the name of Jesus. I speak Zechariah 2 5 around this whole region and put a fire of hedge of protection around each and every person that's in this region, around each and every meeting that God has called for this weekend. And I command the rain not to come, not to be a heavy downpour like they are forecasting, because the storm is going to dissipate in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for this, Father. Lord, I lift up each and every person under the sound of my voice. Father God, I ask that you bless them, Father God. Lord, I ask that you give them peace where they seem to have no peace. Father God, show them exactly what you are trying to pinpoint in this trial, Father. Even if it's a trial that the enemy has sent to cause them to come off, the, to be off their way, or it's a trial that you have ordained for them to come out and show yourself mighty to them. Father God, we thank you for this, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are coming about. Father God, we thank you that, Father, that you are sending your protection to the President and to the, all the offices in the United States. That, Lord, that you're sending the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We take authority over anything, of any slander, of anything that has came against the government of the United States. And we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to the spirit of Antichrist that's causing an uproar in the races among the people and causing a, 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 a race war to happen. I bind you in the name of Jesus and I loose you from America right now in Jesus name. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are sending your power, that Lord, that you will raise up leaders that will be bold enough to speak to the spirit of Antichrist and tell it to dissipate in the United States and bring unity, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you are coming and that you are, are hedging up a protection around Louisiana, especially the south, east, and west of Louisiana, that, Father God, that you are going to cover us with your anointing, and that, Father, that you're going to give our governor wisdom, Father, and that he is going to rule, he is going to make laws in this uh, region along with our legislation that's going to benefit us now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I lift up every minister to you, Father. Those that have every ministry that has lack, I speak to the lack now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask that you flood them with givers, Father God. Flood us with givers, Father. Lord, I ask that you take and you cause doors to be open, Father God. Streams of income to be open. That none of them, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, none of them are lacking. That givers come forth now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we speak to every prodigal son, every prodigal daughter, and we command them to come back to the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you're sending workers in the field, that they will begin to go out and they will begin to bring them back in, Father God. Lord, I ask that, Father God, every need is met. Lord, every person that needs healing right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to the mind, all the depression, all the oppression. I break it now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to their mind and I command it to come alive and hear the word of the Lord. Lord, I seal this word in them, Father God. Lord, I ask that, Father God, that you will begin to heal them physically, Father. Mentally, Father God. It says that by your stripes you took on their pain, Father, that they don't have to be in pain Father God. They don't have to have 
sickness in your life. Sickness is not a trial, Father. We know this, Lord, and we come against it now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for each and every person. I thank you for um, each and every ability to spread the gospel, Father God. And Lord, I give you all praise. I give you all glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Until the next time, I hope to see you again. Don't forget to go to our website, whimofla.com. Look at all the different things from the conferences to um, uh, the upcoming classes, to be a prayer partner, to be a partner with us, to uh, give to the ministry. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page. You can join our, um, you can join our, uh, our, our events for the Glory Conference and for our classes. And we thank you for this. We thank Kathy and Mark for joining us. And we're going to give you, and we're going to, and we hope to see you again. Until the next time, which I believe is Friday, I'll see you then. Bye bye.